right guys, Muddle Muffin here. How are you doing? In today's commentary, we're going to have a look at brand loyalty. And what is it that makes us so passionate about things that in actuality are completely unconnected to us? Alright, first, need to get something out of the way. In my opinion, everyone's entitled to think their wife is the most beautiful woman in the world. Their kids are the smartest. Their god is the greatest. Their chosen gaming platform is the best, their footwear is the sleekest, and their butt is the cutest. You're entitled to think that, but once you bung those thoughts into the public domain, I'm entitled to call bullshit. And you, of course, <laughs> are entitled to tell me how wrong I am. So let's have a look at what brand loyalty is, and how it differentiates from loyalty to family and friends. Brand loyalty in marketing consists of a consumer's commitment to repurchase or otherwise continue using the brand and can be demonstrated by repeat buying of a product or service or other positive behaviours such as word of mouth advocacy. And that has to be true because that's what it says on Wikipedia. Brand loyalty is massively powerful and useful to the producer of a brand who will often spend incredible amounts in maintaining or promoting it. Make no mistake guys, when you show brand loyalty, you are making some marketing executive deliriously happy. Happy enough to treat his girlfriend to a weekend away in a 5 star hotel, and maybe even have enough goodwill left over to buy his wife a bunch of flowers. Brand loyalty is the holy grail of marketing. <laughs> Talking of holy grail of course, the ultimate brand loyalty is the religious one. But we're not going to go into that today. Now, of course, sometimes brand loyalty comes about from a reliable history of the producers consistently delivering what is expected or desired. If a brand fails then to deliver, the backlash felt is much worse than if a no-name failed. So an example in the gaming world, we've seen a collapse of loyalty to Gearbox Software and Ubisoft, two companies who have recently failed to deliver the expectations raised by previous game releases. But not to all. Because although gamers may rage on the developers' forums, there will always be a hardcore following of those who will rage even harder that their brand has been challenged. <laughs> you can almost see them now. Foaming at the mouth and chin dripping with spittle, these red-faced loyalists banging their keyboards with their fists as they race to make their posts before the coronary attack gets to the finishing line first. Classic example is the Xbox vs PlayStation War. Now, one may be better than the other console in one regard, the other may have the edge in another. In my opinion, they're probably roughly the same in capability. Yet how many fanboy warts have raged on the internet about which console is better? And why does it matter so much? It is because of these post-decisional rationalisation, confirmation bias, and the avoidance of cognitive dissonance. Post-decisional rationalisation means that after we make a decision, we rationalise it and support it. Otherwise, we may have to face up to the fact that we made a bad decision. And bad decisions are made by dickwads, idiots and shit for brains, not by us. Confirmation bias means we will gladly absorb anything that reflects our good decision and throw out the window anything that disagrees with it. Cognitive dissonance is where we continually seek to validate our choices to fit our worldview. If our worldview and actions don't meet, something has to give. So we subconsciously fit our worldview to match our actions. The stronger our emotional attachment is to something, the stronger will be the potential for brand loyalty. So, if you like expressing your personality through clothes, you will have a strong loyalty to one or a few brands. If you enjoy playing guitar, you will develop a strong loyalty to a brand. It's the same with cars, beers, even pets. But no one develops a brand loyalty to a washing machine or a fridge because they're just functional items with no emotional attachment. Gamers, however, enjoy their gaming time, usually more than television, sports, or spending quality time with the missus. <laughs> that is, of course, if spending time with the missus can actually be quality time. If we look at the gaming world, the almost ultimate put down in a forum argument is oh, fuck off and go and play Call of Duty. Now this is because its very popularity means that now it is only played by sheep who are happy to pay full price every year for nothing more than a map pack. Us cool kids aren't fooled by the market. We're way too knowledgeable to have the suits draw us into their game. And if that statement pissed you off, it's because you have brand loyalty. Now me personally, I have brand loyalty to nothing. 
That doesn't mean I don't reflect on a producer's previous output and reputation before making a buying decision. But although I'm on PlayStation 3 now, I'll buy whichever next-gen console appears to offer the best value to me. I won't get pissed off if somebody wants to have a bash at a game or a product that I like. That's their call. I may well, of course, have a counter-argument that proves that they're just slime thrashing about in the shallow end of the gene pool. But that's only because I'm right and they're wrong. <laughs> Alright guys, this is my fill out. Take it easy. Don't forget, by the way, always leave your comments. I love reading that stuff. Take it easy, guys. Bye.